Hello everyone, this is Cat with Wondering Soup and we are back with our continual vlog series, Moving Abroad. And this week, we are moving to Germany. As always with our series, we give you the basic information to start you on your journey. Please follow up everything that I give you with more research that uh, works for you and your situation, your lifestyle, and what you're planning to do in whatever country that we're discussing. Again, this is general just to get you started to see if possibly this is where you want to go. So let's kick it off. Um, also, subscribe, follow, share, uh, Wondering Soup. And there's also links to all the information that I'm going to give you on our blog at wonderingsoup.com. All right. So we're going to start out with land ownership. Yes, you can own land. You can own it as a citizen or as an expat. Um, and it's easy, not that complicated. And surprisingly, Germany has a low home ownership uh, percentage, less than 50% or maybe around 50, 52% of people actually own homes. Rental market is very huge there. So let's say you go there and you buy a house and you decide Germany isn't for you, no issues. You can either sell it or you can rent it for residual income. Win-win situation. And uh, the bubble, the housing bubble that generally affects the world, isn't really hitting Germany right now, but who's to say? So take that. Business ownership. Now this was an interesting one when doing my research. Um, on the surface, the answer is yes. But there are gonna be some steps that you have to take. You definitely, the first step is that you have to have a residence permit uh, to own a business. So you, this is not one of those countries where you can walk in and open up a business tomorrow. Not gonna happen. Um, there's going to be people that you're going to need, uh, information that you're going to have to supply. So it will be a process. Uh, but Germany in general is a process from what I've uh, read so far. So it's interesting. If you're not a person who's, a, who's put off by um, a lot of paperwork and steps, and if that appeals to you, then Germany actually may be the country for you. So, but keep that in mind that most things that you do in Germany will be steps and there will be paperwork involved and there's a trail and other offices and things of that nature and that goes back goes well leads directly into citizenship um most of the countries that we've looked at so far um uh, generally are pretty easy five years in the country you can apply for citizenship germany is a little bit different um there's three ways that you can gain citizenship in germany naturalization by right of blood and by right of soil for u.s citizens more than likely you're going to follow up on the naturalization now naturalization has a whole slew of things that you're going to have to or criteria that you're going to have to meet um you got to live there for eight to seven years depending on which residence permit you have um you got to be able to speak and write in german which means you may have to go to schools or language schools and prove that you successfully accomplished that successfully. Uh, you got to be able to show proof that you can support yourself and your family. You can't have a criminal record. Uh, you got to have pass a test and you have to renounce any previous citizenship. So again, bureaucracy. Thy name is Germany. So uh, keep that in mind. If you want to do it and Germany is a country for you, there are going to be definite layers to that. Um, now, on the flip side of that, there's a visa that you can get for 90 days to go and visit, see if this is a country for you, and then you can apply um, for a work permit. So, there is that option. I personally, just because I've actually never been to Germany, I'd probably go and do the 90 day visa just to check it out and see if this is a country for me. Um, so, back to citizenship. Once you meet all that criteria, then you can apply to be a citizenship, I'm sorry, you can apply for citizenship and pay the fees uh, necessary for that. So, medical care. Healthcare in Germany is free on the surface, but everyone is required to have health insurance. And the reason for that is it's almost like a two-tiered system. The basics of healthcare is covered, and by basics I mean like dental, uh, your regular preventive checkup and things of that nature. But once you get above that, then your health insurance kicks in to cover surgeries, uh, major illnesses. 
Uh, and it works. The two tier system works because because the first layer is free, you're generally going to be covered and they're going to catch things earlier. Because it's free, you, ten, you have a tendency to go to the doctor more. America, everything costs, so people don't tend to go until it's catastrophic. Versus in Germany, I got a tickle in my throat, I'm going to go see the doctor because it's free. And if that tickle leads to something bigger, I have the health insurance to cover the bigger portion of it. So it's, it works for them. Uh, as an expat, you will be required to have health insurance. Add that to your budget if you're considering relocating. Education. Germany is again interesting uh, in regards to school. And I'm not talking about adults. I'm talking about kids first through 12th grade. Uh, if you're planning on this being your home, and you're not going, this is where you want to go. You have kids that are still in school. You can enroll them in local school. Uh, it will be taught in German. So if that's going to be an issue, then there's bilingual schools and there's private international schools. Bilingual schools are free. And the public schools are free. Bilingual schools are free, but they are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You get in, you got to get in where you fit in. They're going to be gone quickly. Those spots are available on Monday, gone on Tuesday. So when you're first moving there, more than likely you will be in an international private school. Um, that's going to be pricey. So factor that into your budget. Be cognizant of when the registration opens up for a bilingual school so you can put your kid in there. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, the one thing I found interesting was that kids in Germany typically only go to school in the morning. And after lunch, they go home. Well, there is no lunch. So at the lunchtime, they're going home because there are no facilities that provide lunch. Isn't that fascinating? So yeah, so morning for school, bilingual, public, and international. Cost of living in Germany. That's, that's interesting to me because, uh, or actually it's not as interesting. Mainly because cost of living for countries in Europe tend to me to be very similar to US. And it could be low or high depending on how you want to live. So you're not gonna go there and save a lot of money. Uh, if you're used to spending $2,000 a month to live on in the States, you can do the same thing in Germany. Is it, is it going to be a significant difference in the way you're living? No, no, not at all. Uh, you want to live at $1,000 a month. Can you do it in Germany? Yeah, you can do it. Uh, if you did it in the States and you're used to that standard of living, you can do it in Germany. And when I'm saying that, I mean mid-sized to big cities. I'm not talking about small town burgs or anything like that. That's going to be totally different. Uh, you can definitely move to one of those areas, um, but recognize that there are going to be limitations language, jobs, things of that nature. LGBTQI friendly. Yeah. Um, Germany, same-sex marriage has been legal since 2007. Uh, and J, uh, Germany is very gay friendly on paper. But there have been recent news instances, or reports rather, of attacks on gay people. Um, so be cognizant of that. Um, I would liken it to being in the U.S. It's safe till it's not safe. And I'm, I'm actually introducing a new feature this week, and that is Black and Abroad. And by that I mean um, we've been abroad for a year, and I've really never talked about how would it be to be Black and Abroad. I've introduced the LGBTQI part of it because we're gay, uh, to lesbians. Um, but this is interesting. I, I, I decided to talk about, because everybody always asks me, how is it to be black? And it's been relatively easy, been very freeing. So for Germany, it's Germany. Inherently, there are going to be systematic issues or systemic issues um, that are still present. No matter what they have done to eradicate um, the things from their past, they're still there, right? And if you can find an easy target, and being black is an easy target because you're, that's the first thing you see, um, then you're going to have issues. Um, so what I would say to you is do your research, visit, um, expect some issues, and then decide if this is for you or not. But yeah, there's going to be racism. 
It's just that simple. Um, you can't move to a country whose history, recent history, includes xenophobia and racism and expect not to happen. Maybe in 200 years, but not today. So, with that being said, Germany is a great option for some. Uh, I would definitely go use a 90 day visa, go look around the country, see where you want to live. Um, and remember that it's not going to be easy, but it can be done. Um, and I think you, I think Germany is an awesome option for some. There's that. So anyway, that is moving abroad to Germany. Where should we move to next week? I'm not sure. We are moving. We're moving to Da Nang, um, actually this week. So uh, we'll be showing you some videos from Da Nang. Please check out our recent video when we went to Halong Bay. Uh, and I think our last video on moving abroad was to Mexico. Check that one out as well. Follow, subscribe, like, share, do all of those things. I am Kat, this is Wandering Soup, and we'll see you next time on Moving Abroad.